Hey guys, this is Tokyo Tony, and you're watching Baller Alert. What's up, everybody? My name is Rocky Harris for Baller Alert TV, and I'm sitting down with Miss Tokyo Tony. You have a new dating show that we're so excited about on Zeus. It's Tokyo's Finding Love ASAP, okay? So tell us <laughs> exactly your iconic line, which we have to get into a little bit later, but tell us about how the show came about. Was it from the Real Black China? Like, how did this all start? Well, actually, uh, Zeus, take it. Actually, Zeus reached out to me and offered me the show before. And I turned it down, you know, because I wanted to put my all into The Real Black China. Once that was published, put out, was a success, I was like, hold up, I'm single now, so why not pick back up? So from that, me being the creative director as well as the executive producer of my own show, um, I decided to make it kooky crazy, be me, keep it real, because, you know, we girls, we got to figure it out in the beginning. Yeah, so, yeah. Because if, if you don't, and we go halfway through, and it's something we don't like, we're kind of stuck because then we mm. stuck from the heart strings and from the hot pockets. Absolutely. No, I agree. Um, was there a lot of things that you learned from that experience about dating? I know that you, you said that you had been married five times, right? Five. five times. I am an expert. Just call me the black Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> but so at first, we saw in the clip that you weren't really into the first batch of guys. What what was your first experience like when you walked down and you saw the guys that you had listed? Well, I could hear them before I could see them. Mm -hmm. And they sounded good, like nice virile voices, a whole bunch of 808 sounding strong. Mm -hmm. Then you could tell the ethnicities through the guys, you know, black, white, Asian, things like that. Um, my first impression was like, what the is this mm -hmm. you know like look at the guys you know but as it goes and you have to see mm -hmm. it gets really really good it gets very interesting you know it's one-on-one -on -one interaction so it's really it's really good so, and also another one of the clips you said you like to twerk you like to have sex all day and you like to smoke blunts <laughs> So what yes. what are all the other things like some just name some things that a man needs to know about Tokyo in order in order to get with her? Um, he has to know that I have a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. I'm not to be played with. I'm a people person and I love to feed the homeless. I'm outgoing, you know, and I was a struggling black woman just three years ago to show them that, you know, if you deal with me, you have to fuck with me total. Yeah. You know, on every level, you know, it's not just about sex, blunts, and twerking. That's just my extras. Right. You know, you have to be mentally strong, totally mentally strong. You have to have a tough interior, tough skin to deal with me. You know, not because I'm a broken woman or some man hurt my heart, because if that was the case, I wouldn't have got married five times. Mm -hmm. I'll go six, seven, eight if that takes, if that's what it takes to find my soulmate. So, you know, I... You know, I dibble and dabble with the pretty girls sometimes, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, I would never marry a woman. But at the same time, having fun, being happy, chilling, doing me, oh, hell yeah. And I could take good care of her now. See, you know what was crazy is when I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, there's one girl. <laughs> Why not? You Just only one. Why not? I'm not really into women, like, as friends or whatever. So it's like a whole bunch of women that would get catty. Mm, okay. Two women fighting for me. It's going to be a fight break it now somewhere, you know. So I figured just one, something that I've never had, which was a white girl, mm -hmm. Italian, I think she was, okay, so or whatever. So it's a little sauce in that. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that would be a good thing. Absolutely. And so, like you said, Black China will be featured on the show. Mm -hmm. But what was it like having her kind of guide you and help you with insight on dating? Well, of course, we're cut from total different cloths. You know, she's a millennial like I am, believe it or not, because we're only 17 years apart. Yep. It sounds crazy, but it's real. No, a lot of people need to know the age range of millennials. Yeah, yeah, you know. So it's like, um, it was good. You know, she was very fair, but sometimes she was a little extra crucial, you know, but she knows her mom. She knows that guy cannot be soft. He can't be broke. You know, he has to have something on his mind. He has to be a little spiritual. Yes. You know, you have to be a little spiritual, yes, you know. Exactly. So, therefore, you know, so she kind of tapped on that a little bit. So, it was pretty good. Plus, remember, in the real black China, she was like, my mom had put these guys before me. Untrue. Mm -hmm. However, I figured, well, since you felt that way, how about you help me pick them out? And she was like, let's go. So how would she not like the person that she helped choose? Absolutely. And what was it like working with her? Because I know that she's also a, a, an executive producer on yes. this along with you. 
oh man, we having a ball. Like I see sides of her that's just like me. I mean, absolutely. I mean, from the way she bathed, as crazy as it sounds. I'm watching her. I'm in the shower. She's in the shower. We talking. I can see. That's your baby, so. Yeah, so it's like even from how she bathed to the soaps in her bathroom to everything, it's like she's a spitting image. I'm just chocolate and she vanilla. That's it. it. And so, and like, I feel like we've all kind of witnessed you guys' relationship, yeah. the complexities of it. What would you say um, kind of helped you? Because I know with The Real Black China, we saw a little bit of it. And you guys have rekindled your relationship yeah. a little bit. So what was it like um, kind of learning from her and yourself in the, in the journey? Well, well, through the therapy that we did take, um, me personally, I can't say what she's learned. Mm -hmm but she's taking action, you know, into being a better person towards her mom. But for me, um, I think I learned how the younger generation thinks. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a little out of the box. No, I take that back, a lot out of the box. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas though nowadays, they haven't really experienced anything. Everything is social media, everything is like at your fingertips and things of that nature, mm -hmm. where we had to go out. And I always say this, to, f to figure me out, to follow me, you have to know how to read a map. Who's reading maps these days? Okay. Reading maps, baby. No, no, talk about it. And you know what's funny is in the first episode, or I think it was the second episode of The Real Black China, you had said that. You were saying, like, you know, I don't know what kid speaks louder than their mother. And I think that really stuck with me. And I know that my parents say the same thing, is you should never disrespect your mother, no matter what you guys have been through. And so, like you said, with therapy, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned on how to deal with? To, to, to control, I would say, my temper. You know, even when someone talks down, wrong, or salty to you, it's truly no need to go bashing back. You just wait it out. Just wait your time out. You'll be vindicated. That's what I learned. To just relax. Don't snap back. You know, like I tell people, you know, I call myself a therapist. You know, I've been doing it for 10 years online. And this is what I tell people. Nobody hears you when you're loud. Talk at a monotone or lower, they hear you. If you're screaming, nobody hears it. You talk to someone, I'm going to cover your ass. You hear that. Mm -hmm. You scream, I'm going to cover your ass. Right. Think about it. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. You get it? Absolutely. Like the Italians, they kiss you on the cheek and then what? Handle that business with you. Uh. Right. You That's never know what they're thinking. Exactly. You know. I so that. I learned to just tone it down, my attitude, when it comes to people or my daughter or anybody that, you know, say things that's not true. Just don't worry about it. Just don't brush it off. Just blow it off because it'll come back mm -hmm. again and again due to, you know, me being on ball alert and yes. things of that nature, you know. So, you know, I'm going to take it as it is. But I learned a lesson. Well, you're making so many accomplishments. Another one is that you have a new book called Silent Whisperers, The Art of War. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, this is a autobiography about my life. Mm -hmm. um, what I did was I've always been a writer. My mom always told me, get a book a pen, and I tell China the same thing, and this is a family thing, you write it down. Mm -hmm. However you're feeling, you write it down, you put it up. So what I did was, and I still have these writings, I've been writing since 17 years old. The journals and the papers are this big, this thick, just full of pages. So what I did was I went through and I read it. I was like, wait a minute. This is uh, my entire life. Mm -hmm. So I put that together, combined with the last, I think, three to five years of my life, pushed it together, and made this book. It's awesome. And I better be running to Dubai, honey, because the things that's in it, people going to come get me. Oh, well, can you tell us, just tell us one thing, <laughs> one thing that's, like, spicy that'll make us go by. I'm talking about the Kardashians. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about a little bit everybody. But at the same time, it's nothing raunchy. It's nothing nasty. It's just the truth. Okay. It's a tr so the, the truth can't be, you know, put to the side, period. Because it is what it is. Lies can always be up, down, mid-grade. Who cares? But the truth is always going to stick. Okay. Period. ASAP. And the book, and the book is, is super exciting because I have a very exciting, erotic, crazy, sporadic life. Yes. But at the same time, so God-filled, God-fearing, you know, real. Mm -hmm. And I just try to, you know, be the best person that I could be and just be me. That's it. Like, look at this journey. I'm not an actress, I'm not a singer, a songwriter, a dancer, a poet, none of that. I don't have to wake up in the morning and perform for people for a paycheck. I'm just me, and this is where it lands. We love it.
Just being me. Ratchet mouth sometimes, but it's just me, baby. It's just me. <laughs> well, no, we have to talk about your iconic line. I'm ready to get the ASAP after this, okay? Right. So how did you feel when that, I feel like the internet just took it by storm. I say it, I'm waiting to caption a picture with it. Like literally, you got Megan Thee Stallion saying it. How did you feel when that just took like by storm on the internet? Well, to be perfectly honest, it's not the first time. Mm -hmm. It's not. Um, it's almost like everything I say, it just turns golden, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the first person that said something was Nicki Minaj for another saying, mm -hmm. you know, and she put it on every platform, you know, so that was great. So that was like the highlight of someone saying it. So saying it this time, it's okay, but I, I want somebody to put it out there so I can get it because trademark. Okay. I'm trademark, honey. Listen. All the way, what? I know that's trademark. Right. <laughs> Books, busy, blessed, yes. period. Ooh. So on, also, um, let us know what else we can expect from you. Anything else? Um, hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that someone that's as enthusiastic, mm -hmm. smart, witty, knows exactly what it is due to my youth, mm -hmm. my energetic being, my inner beauty, my outer beauty, to use that to get us some money. So I feel like I could do a talk show just as well mm -hmm. as anybody else, and we'll have a beautiful platform, you know, of all kinds of people, all ages, you know, because as you said, that one saying has pulled in teenagers, babies, old people, anybody, right. you know, the elders are saying it, like they don't even curse and they talking, right. you know, so hopefully maybe a, a, another show that would exude me, mm -hmm. you know, something that's ongoing. You know, something that can benefit the next woman, the next man, because I look at that equally. I don't want to do nothing no more for a woman that I wouldn't do for a man. You know, you say push the woman, push the woman. We have enough women empowerment. We need some men empowerment. Mm -hmm. So a woman being maternal, I think I want to empower men. Okay. You know, so I, I have a lot you know, that I want to do, you know, aside from buying me a new house, child, buying me a car, because I ain't did neither one yet. I'm just stacking the paychecks, you know. So I'm just, you know, blessed and just want to be fruitful and multiply and be happy, you know. So, and another thing, I would love to do a game show. Yes. I would love to be, hit that button right now, God damn. No. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm wide open, you know, free agent. Um, I do have a manager now. Tamika Briscoe. I'm so excited about that. You know, she has her master's degree in journalism and, you know, she's real fruitful, you know, within the community of Hollywood. You know, and that one thing I didn't have to sell my soul or sell no ushi to get where I am. I walked through the front door Period. with my head up in my chest. Yes, I love it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're looking so forward to your dating show. Like I told you before we start airing, I mean, I'm excited. I, I haven't been this excited for a dating reality TV show since Flavor Flav. Wow. So I'm excited. It's so different, so off the hook. I pro I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to make you a promise. You give me one of your smallest desires in life, and I'll fulfill it for you if this doesn't happen. If you don't fall in love and go crazy over this show, I'm going to get something for you. Whatever your smallest, your least desire is in life, mm -hmm. I promise you. Okay. Hold you to it. Well, gotcha. I will thank you guys so much and stay tuned on Baller Alert TV.